So how are we doing? Uh, thanks for tuning in tonight, guys. Um, I've been kind of been monitoring the marketplace, as I'm sure many of you guys have, for the last you know couple of weeks, last month, with all the changes. We did a, a phase two video. I'll link that in the description below. Go check it out. But since we've been in this phase two, I find me and you know when I dip into Twitter and just kind of see what you guys are thinking and saying, I think we're all in the same kind of boat in the sense that we have lost a little bit of perception in terms of it is quite hard to gauge now. Some, you know, some relative value, what's good, what's overpriced, what could drop in price, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, I found myself the last couple of days looking for two things. Number one is uh, players that are being overlooked due to the lack of the criteria that I certainly put priority on, you know, in terms of European football, being a European national with the Euros on the horizon next summer, and being at a top club, performing well, potential for PB, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I've been looking for players that don't quite tick as many boxes that have the potential to tick them maybe this time next year, you know, that kind of thing. As well as, quite simply, just players who are maybe injured um, because that's quite an easy slam dunk, you know. Um, if somebody's injured, they're on the, the treatment table, they're not playing, traders lose interest, you know, their attention span slows down and they look to move their money into something that might actually move for a positive growth sooner rather than later kind of thing. Um, that led me basically to doing something similar to I did this time last year. I did a video called Making Money from Relegation. Um, so it's basically looking for players who might have some sort of January potential. And um, players who... Um, yeah, basically some January potential. Because January signings are always going to happen. Now the thing with January signings is there's a few criteria January signings normally follow. And there's a few things that you should always be kind of mindful and look out for, right? So I've made a little list. I've just called it subprime because that's what I would class these players as kind of right now being, okay? So um, I've got one I'm going to highlight to you in particular. But this is my little subprime list, okay? Now, um, this is I've basically put this together, as you can see, when I last modified it. I've, it's not something I've put a lot of attention into. It's a list that will grow. And as it does grow, I'll, I'll do more videos and I'll update these as I go, okay? But... The reason, first of all, there's not anyone from the Premier League in here because the Premier League clubs now have so much money that they can refuse January transfers if it doesn't suit them um, from bigger teams or from teams abroad quite easily. So the Ryan Fraser situation is kind of what prompted me towards this because Fraser and Christian Eriksen for that matter, I'd probably add him onto this list because Christian Eriksen, um, if anyone's going to move in the summer, uh, pardon me, in January, could very much be Ericsson seems to have been as, as well as the other Tottenham boys you know your older wilds and these types of guys um, it, you know Levy might just go and push the shove and they could give him a good deal and get him out the door and get some transfer fees or whatever but um, so this is basically my first kind of draft on this and I say this will develop as time goes on now the top three there are all Serie A players Rabio Chan are not going to be surprises to you they're more than likely going to get moves Emery Chan has not been included in the Champions League squad for Juventus I don't think he's even featured in competitive football really for them this year but he's still been included in Germany squads and he's been included in the Germany squad as a centre back you know so um, he's played in England before he was pretty successful at Liverpool he was pretty successful at Leverkusen as well so him leaving Juventus, I don't think is too straight, too big of a stretch. What time a team might be interested in him? Well, I'll, you know, it's that, that's all up for conjecture, all up for speculation. Same with Rabio, big fuss with PSG last year. He's went to UV and he's not really featured too much. And there's rumours and murmurs that his mum is, you know, going to be starting or his missus. I can't remember whose agent is, but some sort of family member may start kicking up. The other one I've got there is Marco Rog. Okay, now Marco Rog. Um, Recently transferred to Cagliari from Napoli in the summer, just gone there. Um, and he's doing pretty well, you know. Um, he's in the Croatia team. Cagliari are sitting fourth at the moment. They're playing some good football and the stats are pretty decent. And with him going to the Euros, um, he might just be at Cagliari for one season and then move on, you know, because a Croatian international midfielder who's at a nice age, he's got good experience for a top flight division. Could be somebody who... Maybe not necessarily in January because I just went to Cagliari in the summer, but certainly could be going further abroad. And then the second reason I wanted to do this video today is uh, Habib Diallo. Okay, now Habib Diallo is not a name that will be new to many of you guys, but I had earmarked to buy him this week. He went down to 102, and I thought brilliant. He'll kind of hover at that if I can get him below a pound even better because all the attention will be on all these Euro matches and whatever, and I'll go pick him up. And then boom, within a 24-hour period, basically he's went up. Um, 12 percent it says there it's a bit more than that when you take them from 102 to 117 um it's just around that kind of 15 percent mark so i thought oh, jesus missed a boat and that's the thing with football index guys is it's really hard 
you can set all the best laid plans in motion that you want, but all it takes is one whale to decide I'm buying him right now. I think he's like third top goal scorer in the league or something, you know? So it, all it takes is one person to think I'm buying him now, he's 102 and they drop tons of money on him. And then you lose your opportunity, you lose your your bargain that you've been looking for, okay? And then that brought me on to the next person on the list, which is Santa Maria. Now, I've actually just went and bought a bucket load of this guy, and I'll tell you why shortly. We then look at the guys I've got for La Liga. So, Braves Mendez is a name you'll be very familiar with. Me and Connor, FI manager, both loved the guy last season. Celia Vigo are doing very poorly. And he's a ve he's exactly the sort of guy who, yeah, he's out of form. Celia Vigo are struggling again. That's two seasons in a row they've been really struggling. Um, so somebody might be able to get him for quite a cut price because he isn't in form. I think he may have had a few wee battles with injury this year, but again, he's somebody who I would be keeping attention on. And then there's Lauren Moron, okay? And Lauren Moron has been doing very well for Betis this year. And he actually came to my attention through the People's Portfolio series. Somebody recommended him. And uh, he's fairly cheap right now as well. I want to say he's like 40, 50p as well. But he's scoring goals. He's at a nice age as well. And again, he's a sort of player who could easily turn up uh, at like... I'm just giving you a name for the sake of giving you a name, but like a Newcastle, like 80 pence, a bigger pardon. Um, January signing, you know, and people are like, oh, who's this guy? You know, kind of similar to, um, kind of similar to like uh, Papi Sisi when he went to Newcastle, you know, that kind of thing. So he's had a good first half of the year. He's not a big name. He's not a big team. He might not command uh, an obscure, like a, a massively overinflated price tag, even though he's on good form and bets will want to lose him. But he's certainly somebody worth keeping an eye on. And with Spain, you know, obviously we bought Rodrigo Moreno recently with their kind of forward issue. You know, Morata's around, Paco Alcacer's around, Rodrigo's around, Diego Costa. But all these guys kind of suffer from injuries. And Spain, they're always good for just chucking strikers in who are on form and give them a chance and see how it goes. And he might get a little chance. Uh, who knows? Uh, and then the three we've got there from the Bundesliga, Kramaric, there's a question mark on that because I thought in the summer... Kramaric won't leave. Uh, I thought he would leave, sorry, but then he was injured. The club stuck by him. Came out saying how much he loves the club. But it was very recently, after he made his first little return to injury, so there'll be set back, he made a comment quite am uh, ambiguous saying, I'm never going to close the door on other opportunities. So he might now be saying, listen, if I can get the club a good amount of money, then I'll take the transfer and I'll move my career on. Robin Cock now. Um, we know all the stuff with Germany, you know, like Sula has done a big injury, uh, guys like Boateng are out of favour, Hummels has retired, you know, they've been forced retired, that type of thing, and this guy's still getting into the, this guy's getting into the Germany squad, and Freiburg are like top six right now, so having, again, a Germany international centre-back, there's a lot of clubs out there that are always going to be looking for centre-backs of some pedigree, and uh, this guy coming from Freiburg, um, he might be quite cheap, and he's some, he's certainly some cheap on the index, he's like 30, 40 pence as well, and um, if he gets capped in the next, the you know, the international break we're in the now, certainly, and Freiburg do well between now and the Christmas break, I wouldn't be surprised to see him get linked to, you know, your West Ham's or the world, your Everton's, um, you know, French clubs, Spanish clubs, you know, whatever, maybe even a Dortmund or something. And then we've got Hennings. Now, Hennings plays for Dusseldorf there in the bottom five, bottom six of the league, and he's amongst the top goal scorers. So, again, strikers like that, like I kind of said, like there's buckets of examples, but it's just the one that keeps coming to the front of my mind, like your Papi CC types. Um, and Habib Diallo, you know, these types of guys who play for less fancied clubs, poorer clubs, would be open to a big money transfer. The players on form, and strikers especially, you want to get them when they're hot, you know, if you're going to be signing them into your squad, sort of thing. So the boy we, we've picked up, Santa Maria, I'll just show you some things, right, why he's underpriced and whatever as well, okay? So I've only got the basic thing for index gain, so you can only just see the base, but his PB max is 147, which isn't great. He won't be grabbing traders' attention from his PB score, okay? Um, he had had some links over the summer and things like that, you know, with Lille, Napoli, Aston Villa, um, a few teams have been in for him, so he has on people's radars from his performances last season, okay? Now... We actually drill into his stats. This is where it gets really interesting, okay? So um, I've only looked at one or two matches. I thought the 0-0 versus Montpellier would be a good game because he's obviously not assisted or scored. And Montpellier have had a decent season and we know they've got a fancied midfield, you know, um, with uh, Savernier and uh, who's our guy? Matale, uh, Amole, you know, these types of guys. So he's played 7.5, you know, and if you look at what he's done, you know, he's only made 37 passes, you know, so he's not been on the ball very much. High accuracy rate, of course, and we like the long balls. Eight, eight attempted, six completed, 60 touches, you know, 43 passes. Jules, he's 112, lost eight, but he's been involved in everything. He's been involved in a lot of duels. Uh, dribbles and tackles are all really high. Aerials, he's getting interceptions, he's getting involved in a lot of stuff. But then when you actually look at the match itself, um, so Angers, 
less than 40% possession and then when you scroll through the rest of the stats and you compare what he's done to the team overall he's a big big part of that team Angers are cu currently sitting fourth and third in the league a bigger pardon and again a very unfancied poorer team who you know they can't they, they can't sustain that level in the league they're at the now you know um, and as they slip down between now and Christmas January comes calling and uh, someday again a Villa a Napoli a Lille these types of teams could easily be coming in for this guy at 24 and uh, look at his tackles per game 3.31 that's incredible now if you think about the last couple of players who have left France with that tag of um, or the, the highest tackling player in France you also think about N'Golo Kante you're now going to start thinking about Wilfred Ndidi and then you've got Idrissa Gay uh, so all three of those guys have came to the Premier League off the back of being the guy in France with the highest tackling percentage and this guy is definitely getting into that that club you know so uh, and then all, again all these guys they came from unfancied teams you know like Angers you know I don't think they actually came from Angers right enough but Kante came from <laughs> I want to say non, I could be wrong on that. Um, but, you know, these guys aren't coming from Monaco, they're not coming from Lille, they're not coming from Paris Saint-Germain, they're coming from the lower teams, you know, and moving their career on. So I've seen this guy in all these stats that I'm showing you now, and that's why he's unfancied on the index, because his PB isn't great, because he's in a team that has, you know, uh, counter-attack, you know, they're all but set pieces. Uh, their weaknesses is keeping possession of the ball, so they're forever, you know, so he's not in a team that really is... Um, is football index friendly and right now guys I say I bought a shed load of them I don't mind telling you um, like 500 plus because wait till you see his price he is incredibly 30 odd pence something like that Baptiste Santa Maria 33 pence he's been up a penny since I bought him I've probably moved him up a penny by buying him uh, this isn't a video to tell you go buy this guy but what I'm telling you guys I started the video off is we're all trying to judge where's value and who's a good price who's overinflated who's got room to grow all that type of thing and sometimes you'll be looking through like I've been doing today and you see something like that just smacks you in the face Habib Diallo when he was 102 you know you, when you see these opportunities staring you in the face you need to jump on them guys that's the lesson to take care because even if you're a, a Ryan Fraser fan like I am you're thinking, right, okay, his contract is out in January, he's on good form. All it takes is that news story to break yesterday that he's going to be signing with Liverpool in January and you've lost your opportunity, you've lost your, your, your purchase, you've lost your bargain that you'd been eyeing up or you've been waiting on the price to get to that exact sweet spot or maybe you're waiting on an hour player to pop so you can sell for a great profit and roll it on, which is cool. But sometimes you miss the boat, guys, and sometimes you've just got to move things around and do everything you can to actually get on these guys while the going is good, you know. So, um, who's your picks, guys? This is, I say, my first draft of this list. Um, who would you add to it? Who are you watching the now? Who do you think is subprime? You know, they're ready to pop. They're really undervalued. They've got a lot of potential going forward for any of the kind of reasons we've been discussing in the video. Uh, like, share, comment, retweet, all that good stuff, guys. Get stuck into the comment section below. I really do love it and I miss it. Thanks a lot for tuning in and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.